running. Our first example is uh, LA Times newspaper. And this is their blog on TypePad. And they use their blogs to really bridge the gap between the print edition, which is uh, what people experience offline, uh, and I say it's what they read it during the commute, and the online edition, which is what they read when they get to work and they're in the cubicle. So a lot of times your staff, what, no matter the size of your business, doesn't really have time to learn a very complex content management system. So with a blog, you simply get up and get going and, and, get, and get back to your life and back to your job and back to your business. So with the LA Times blogs, their typepad blogs help them engage the readership from offline to online, from commute to cubicle. And something to point out is up there in the mid-right, let me get my pointer um, right up here, you'll notice that they're using some very basic social media options, telling people about their RSS feed so people can subscribe to the updates for this particular blog, as well as staying connected via Twitter or Facebook. So a lot of times businesses think that social media is all or nothing, that you're either all the way out there with Facebook and Twitter and friend feed and social media and sharing and subscriptions and all that stuff, but this can be done at different orders of magnitude. So in this case, they're using Twitter and Facebook combined with the RSS feed to really bring people into back to the blog. And that's something we'll probably harp on a, little, a few times today, which is that we really believe that the blog is the centerpiece of your online strategy, your online presence, that uh, as these new social services, media services come and go, uh, you know, once Facebook it becomes as popular as Friendster is now, once Twitter is no longer the big, ooh, shiny, amazing thing, you need to be able to adapt to the next technology that your customers and your readers are using. And a blog is a fantastic way to stay adaptable to the fads uh, and trends that we're seeing in social media and doing business online. Uh, and for folks that are wondering about social media, uh, there are two calls we did previously in this series, which was Denise's, Denise Wakeman and Brent Leary, and you can access those at typepad.com slash small dash business dash blogs and I'll be giving out that URL again towards the end of the call. We do have all the recordings from this series available online for you to listen to at a later time. So this was LA Times Blogs, which works with their existing newspaper site and their offline print edition. Our next example is Amazon.com. And what's wild about this example is Amazon has a blogging platform. They have a blogging system that they use for book authors, where authors of a book, you can claim your book and, and write a blog that's hosted on Amazon that appears next to your books if you're an author. But they still use TypePad, in this case, for their blogs. Uh, this is their blog for pet lovers, which, of course, features their pet-related products. But also, it's a way to engage with the people who are nuts about their dogs or their cats or their fish or whatever animals we have, whatever mammals or lizards we have in the house. And so they use TypePad in this case to extend the brand and be able to use the blogs as a very niche-specific, topic-specific way to bring traffic in as well as to drive it back to their e-commerce site. So they already have this really complex uh, I want to say robust because everybody uses the word robust, but uh, it is really robust system of e-commerce and customer relationship management. And so they use the blogs to bring people into that world. Our next example is the New England Sports Network, also known as Nesson. This is a huge sports property. And I always use sports and politics as examples of great blogging because people are very passionate about sports and politics. And the worlds of sports and politics, no matter uh, if you're talking politics at the federal, local level, municipal level, other countries, other languages, or you're talking about sports by geographic location, you know, tennis, soccer. We have a lot of French folks here at Six Apart, so we're always arguing about which football is the real football. <laughs> so that kind of immediacy is, I think, uh, very uh, instructive to how a blog can be used in a certain industry or in a certain way. And this blog you're seeing right now at nesson.com, the URL is right there uh, on the slide, is all one blog. It's all one blog on TypePad with multiple staff 
contributing articles, editorial. So uh, a lot of times with, what's good with a blog is you can have different levels of permission. So you're able to have a group of folks that can add content but not publish it, uh, some editors that can read what they've written and publish it, and you've got other folks that can moderate the comments as they come in. So the comments that are uh, attached to a post are on topic and relevant and important. And again, you'll notice they are doing some social stuff at the very upper right. You'll see the RSS icon, that big orange icon as well as uh, the Twitter icon right there, and then the old school send us your email icon. So again, social media can be stepped into gradually. But what we're really focusing on for this webinar series is small business. So I, I want to show some examples from the world of small business. Our first one is Better Water Solutions, which is a, it's a, it's a local business in the UK that works on water care, you know, soft water, hard water, making sure the water in your household is the healthiest for your family. And this is an example of a local business using a blog as their website. So there's no longer a site and a blog, it's all in the same area. And something to point out on this example, and the URL is right there at the bottom, is that they're using lead generation. They're saying request a free water test. So often with a blog, with any type of website really, you have one chance to get people in the door. So you want to have some kind of contact capture or lead generation or a way to qualify people to be, parts of, to be prospects in your business. And we'll look at a few examples later on in the call. But this was Better Water Solutions. And for folks that are TypePad users, what he's doing at the top here is he's using what we call featured post which is like a thumbtack that's going to put this uh, subscription form, it's actually a post, and he's used the featured post feature to keep it tacked to the top of the home page. So no matter what he writes underneath of it, that lead generation box, the request to free water test, stays at the top. Our next example is a local chamber of commerce in the UK which is lovely charring, charring or charring? Okay, charring. Okay. Claire's a Brit, so she knows how to say things. <laughs> lovely charring, Kent, which is uh, a business chamber of commerce uh, in Kent, which is a county, right? Right. I got it right. I always get counties <laughs> and provinces mixed up. Sorry, folks. Um, but what you're finding here is an example of a local blog. So this particular blog is really focused on a geographic area in the world. And I think as customers and consumers get more educated in how to use search engines and how to use online tools for social media or reviews from Yelp, they're learning that they can get results and search results and topics just for where they are in the world right now. So I think this is an example of the, the maturity as consumers realize they can search for things that are just in their hometown or just in their language. And then one more using e-commerce that we really like because we helped put it together is Cards by Gina, which is cardsbyginashaw.com. And she does handmade greeting cards and stationery. And this is a really good example of bringing all these different things together. together. You know, she has the blog on the left side. She has a very friendly picture. You know it's a real person. Uh, small businesses know that real people is what makes that connection. She's got a very obvious shop now button on the right side, a, a point out to her, her feed reader, a way to subscribe to her new post by email. So she's able to capture these people as they're coming into her life, into her blog, and market to them over time. So when they need handmade stationery or it's a wedding or a baby shower, they think of her and they can find her quite easily. And this is also an example of a blog that our services team did, our TypePad 1 support team did the, uh, what we call the power launch, where we help a new blogger get all their ducks in a row and get their blog out the door. So this is an example of a services team power launch.